Hi, I'm Venki Rao from IBM. Let us look at how IBM's Predictive Maintenance and Quality Solution, or PMQ, helps improve a manufacturing operation. This demo simulates live streaming data coming in from various sensors fitted to different pieces of equipment in a manufacturing operation. Let's start at the top left of the screen and introduce you to what we are seeing here. Let's start with the Equipment Monitoring tab first. On top of the screen, we have five key performance indicators shown. The first one is Operation Shutdown Time, and this shows in a pie chart the breakdown of the causes for operational shutdown. You can see that 40% is related to equipment failure. The next KPI here is the overall equipment health score. Calculating the equipment health score is a key part of IBM's intellectual property. By converting complex operations into a single, easily understandable and usable metric, IBM's PMQ really helps enterprises make sense of the data deluge that they find themselves in. The next KPI relates to daily production targets and the other two refer to defect count and anomaly count. Now let us look at the left part of the screen. You can see that our manufacturing process has four phases. Reheating, roughing, finishing and cooling. Each of these phases has multiple machines with the, finish, with the finishing phase having five machines. To the top right of each machine you will notice a red circle. That red circle refers to the number of alerts that the system has generated based on data streaming from various sensors. Since FM1 has by far the largest number of alerts, we will focus the rest of our investigative efforts on this machine. When I click FM1 on the right, I can see that its overall health score is 68, which is lower than the average health score of 85 for the entire operation. The other concerning factor is the failure probability which is currently at 75 percent. The other indicators here also do not give me any additional comfort. I can also look below to see the health score trend and the correlation between the dip in the health score trend and the dip in the equipment availability trend. If I want more information on what is causing these alerts I can look below to the types of measurements our sensors are taking and, why, and when any of these measurements go out of predefined bounds, the system is throwing an alarm. To explore this further, I click on the Anomaly Detection tab. On this tab, I can zero in further on Finishing Machine 1. Firstly, I can see a graphic representation of the anomaly trend some of the variables have been constantly throwing alarms. I can see this reflected in the anomaly log on a real-time basis. I can also see individual gauges for each of these derived variables below. All of this is being updated constantly based on streaming data from sensors. Apart from the derived variables, you can also see trend lines from the raw sensor measurements below. This helps me understand why the health score for FM1 is down and what the drivers of this low health score are. Next, I click on the Failure Prediction tab and choose the Equipment Failure Probability option. On the left side of the screen, you can see various pieces of equipment with their rotating failure probabilities listed against them. You can also see a trend line for FM1 and you can see how the trend line of for failure is on its way up. On the right side of the screen you can see the list of input variables that are the key predictors of failure. The, these can be more clearly observed by looking at the decision tree of the prediction model which is on the bottom right part of the screen. Let us examine this in some detail. 
at the top of the decision tree, we have broken down the cases where a piece of the piece of equipment has failed versus the times where it has not failed. So we can see here that this equipment has indicated 34 failures. If we break these 34 failures down by motor temperature, we can see that where the motor temperature is below 38 degrees, there are no failures. So clearly motor temperature is a really important indicator. In the range between 38 to 48 degrees, there have been five failures, whereas of the 34, 29 failures have occurred where the motor temperature exceeds 48 degrees. So clearly motor temperature is, is, a, is, a, is a big indicator of, of why this piece of equipment is failing. If we then break this down further into the drive speed control distance, once again, you can see that where that exceeds 92, we see the majority of the failures falling into that category. So 23 out of the 29 are where the, the motor temperature exceeds 48 degrees and the drive speed control difference exceeds 92. And further breaking this down, you can see where the motor vibration speed exceeds 73, 14 of those cases fall into that category. So essentially what this decision tree is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to get to the root causes of why this piece of equipment is likely to fail. And this is driven by the predictive models that we have developed based on the data that's streaming in from all of these sensors. So this has given me a really good understanding of why this equipment is likely to fail. So the next thing that I need to do is proactively fix this by scheduling a maintenance task. I can do this by choosing the Equipment Maintenance Schedule option on the Failure Prediction tab. Of course, scheduling maintenance is not an easy task. There are several constraints that I need to optimize in order to do this. For example, I cannot stop the production of this batch midway. Also, I need to look at current maintenance schedules, availability of trained and expert resources, supply schedules, etc. Thankfully, PMQ has built-in optimization capabilities that let me take all these constraints into account and run an optimized decision. So if I click on the top three machines with the highest failure probabilities and run the optimized decision button, you will notice that with FM4 and DC1, even though the failure probability is high, the system says you can stick with the scheduled maintenance. But for FM1, an urgent inspection is advised by the system. Based on this advice, I can click the Create Work Order in Maximo button, which creates a work order with all the relevant information so our maintenance technicians can repair it immediately. That brings me to the end of this demonstration. Thank you for your time and have a great day.